Hello, I'm Dr. Caitlin Pike, and I would like to walk you through some of the things that you need to think about if you are preparing to communicate your research to external audiences. I also think of these slides as comms and marketing 101, because these real, really are basic ideas you have to think about in order to understand how to package up your message in a way that's going to be meaningful and palatable and interesting to a particular audience, and how you can ensure that that audience will actually be able to engage with what you want to give them. So the first thing to think about is what your product is. Now I think of your product as what your particular area of knowledge is. So an example of that might be uh, information about flood mitigation techniques. So perhaps you are someone working in uh, geology or in engineering and you know about flood mitigation. And so that would be your product. That's what you research, that's what you know about, that's your expertise that you can share with the world in some format or another. So once you've got that settled, you can be thinking about what your niche is. And I think about niche as uh, the spin that you can put on that particular topic that is kind of drilling down into it, just taking a particular slice of it and, and thinking only about that slice. So rather than the whole area of that particular study, just one aspect of it that you can go into in a bit more depth. So working on this example, perhaps you think that you would like to drill down in to thinking about flood mitigation in farmland. So here we've taken any type of flood mitigation and we've narrowed it down into flood mitigation in a particular spot. And we're also thinking about facts rather than, for example, um, methodologies or how to um, project into the future. So there are all sorts of different ways that you might look at a particular slice of information. So it's also taking that into account. Finally, you have to think about what is your brand. And your brand, I think of, is the, the flavor of how you're going to go about presenting what you've figured out here for your niche. So for example, here you might be thinking about you and your research project collaborators are going to provide real-time updates on the latest advances in flood mitigation tactics. And you can see that this is much more specific than this, which is again more specific than that. And the reason that I've said here that you have to think about who is you is that maybe you don't have the time to do a whole lot of outreach on your own, and so you want to work together with your collaborators or your laboratory or research group or some friends that you're working with. It can be anyone, but you need to know if it's just you or if it's a group of you. Because if it is a group of you, then that would have a slightly different uh, impact in terms of your identity. You might need to think of a name then. You might need to think about how you're going to go about doing that. So it's just good to be clear about who is going to be responsible for the communication. And that's what's reflected here, where it says research project collaborators. So in this case, the you is not an individual, but a whole group of people working in this particular area together. So I think that this is the first thing that you have to do, because you need to know what you have already at your fingertips that you can put out into the world. Now, some people might argue that this is actually the second step, and that what I'm about to show you on the next slide is the first step, but I personally think that research communication is more likely to happen if you base it on something that you already have, and not flipping it around and thinking, what does someone else want, or what do I you know, see as a gap in the world, and then having to work and do extra stuff to fill that gap. Now, if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine, and perhaps both of these things can happen at once. But I think for most people, it's much easier to start with what you've already got. So you might as well be thinking about what can you just do off the top of your head and then build from there. So the next thing then is to be thinking about communications basics. And here is the really important step of understanding who your audience are. Now, your audience might be chosen by you. They might be chosen because uh, there's a particular need built into a research grant, for example, or perhaps this is an assignment and you've got an advisor or teacher telling you that this is what your audience must be. Perhaps you're doing widening participation work so you know that the audience are going to be children. There are all sorts of things that might lead you to automatically know who your audience are, and there are other things where you might say, actually, I could pick from anything, which audience do I want? It doesn't really matter how you get there, you just need to understand who it is you're talking to so that you know how to talk to them and how to get at them in order to do that talking. And we'll come on to that in a minute. So in this particular case, again, building on the, the flooding information, 
you might be thinking that you're interested in working with non-experts, people who are adults, so that you have a certain level of knowledge you can assume there. And particularly, you might be interested in farmers. We know that farmland mitigation is what we talked about, and so, of course, it would follow that this is quite a likely and an obvious audience. Once you know that, you can then be thinking not just, you know, what's the appropriate wording to use, how much can I assume about what they already know, you can definitely build that into the wider idea of who is the audience. But you also then need to think, how can you connect with and how can you access these people? Because you don't want to be doing research outreach where you're producing a particular product that you've thought of and then only afterwards realize that actually there's no way to get that product to that audience or to realize that that audience aren't interested in that particular product. So you do need to think up front, how are you going to be interacting with, this, with these people? So in the case of farmers, you might say, actually, it's really helpful to have flyers. We can put them in mailboxes. We can disseminate them through industry partners who might then uh, drop them off during visits. We could have newsletters. We might email those newsletters. We might also have newsletters in a physical form that, again, come through the mail. You might have connections that you make within industry so that you can tell someone who's a current partner here is what I have, can you please tell this to other people that you know that I don't know, and then they can do that networking for you. So that's the sort of thought process that you have to go through. And this really all comes down to thinking about where are people going to be getting this information, what are their habits, how do they consume uh, media, what, whatever type of media, do they care about social media, are they only on newspapers, do they listen to the radio, just knowing that audience inside and out will help you understand how you can connect with them. And also knowing your context. So there are a lot of people who do research where they're quite removed from their particular audience, and so they might need to have some intervening connections there, or some steps that build up to presenting the outreach. Or there are other people that are doing research with the audience, and they already have these connections, they know people really well, and then it's a lot easier to disseminate things. So you just have to bring your particular knowledge to this so that you can figure out the best answer for you. Finally, I think it's really important to be thinking about what you want to achieve. So a lot of people rush into outreach projects thinking, I have to do this because of a grant, I need to do this because everyone else does it, uh, I want to do this because it's kind of fun, I'm already on Twitter so I might as well tweet some things. But that's, those are all valid. There are definitely reasons why you would have to start from that point if you do have obligations or interests. But you do also need to think, I don't want to waste my time doing any of that, so can I pick a particular goal, work towards that goal, see if I've met that goal, and then adjust accordingly. And I think the, the really important thing here is not just being able to report back in case it is something that you need for impact with relationships to grants and, and funding bodies and partners, but really it's thinking about your own time and using your own time wisely and investing in things in appropriate amounts of, of energy levels and financial levels and just thinking about really what's practical. So here, for example, in this case, we might be thinking about preventing irresponsible water use practices, facilitating empowerment, changing voting practices, and seeking volunteers. So there's kind of an overarching theme here of having some social responsibility and taking research and making it uh, useful, making it a tool for change. So that's, these are all different areas in which you might be able to achieve that sort of thing. And at the end of the day, you could look back and say, do we see fewer water practices like this? Do we see more that are like this? Do we have more voters? How I recruited more volunteers? So each of those things is actually pretty measurable in some fashion. Even empowerment, you could go out and run um, surveys, or you could see if there is more grassroots activity. And so you could get a sense through evaluation whether you have achieved that goal. And if you haven't, you could then think, right, why didn't I, and what new thing do I need to do to improve my communication? And this is really essential, not just in outreach, but in any sort of education and communication in general, you want to be making sure that you're actually achieving what you've set out to achieve. So really these are the only basics that you need at your fingertips before you can embark on whatever sort of communication outreach you want. So once you know that information, you can start thinking about the right channel. Is it Facebook? Is it a video? 
uh, stream? Is it a, a YouTube channel where you're constantly updating? Is it a Twitter feed? What does it look like? And you can take all of that information and make those choices and think about a communication strategy overall where you have certain goals relating to the timeline and the different people involved and, and how that's all going to be shaped. So once you do this thinking, pull yourself together a plan where you've got a nice grid where you can lay all of that out and just tick things off one by one and go through each of those steps to get your communication uh, out into the world and achieving the sorts of goals that you're looking for.